Okay. Let's try this again. Oh my god. It's the third time. Somehow this camera has a continuous setting and it wasn't on continuous. It would record for, it seemed to be random, for a few minutes and then just beep, beep, beep and stop. Even though there's plenty of memory and the battery's good. I think I got it now though. So, I'm going to try and burn some of this shit off. I'm not going to go through the whole spiel I just did about the airplanes and the electrical waves. And see my see my elbow there? Yeah, I remember when the uh, when I was a kid and the doctor said, "Hey, if you ever want to know your pulse, just look at your elbow and then and then count the clock for 15 seconds and then multiply by 4 and you'll get your pulse rate." Oh, thanks, doc. I don't have to hold my wrist in here. I just have to look at my elbow. Oh, oh yeah, or just Look at your wrist, you know, where it pulses there too, and it pulses there too, and it pulses under your arm too. That's all perfectly normal for your glands to be giant, swollen, blackish colored, and pulse at 120 beats a minute just for no particular reason. It's probably because I drank too much Pepsi when I was younger and I messed up my, my, um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's, uh, not from drinking Pepsi or having smoked cigarettes or doing drugs in the 90s or any of that stuff. It's from nanoparticles of chemtrails being breathed into my body and stored anywhere they can because your body cannot process it and it's can't it's not water soluble, it's not going to come out. So anyway, it builds up under your skin. It's kind of like a subcutaneous plasma that's made up of your normal plasma that would be under your skin and then nanoparticles of aluminum and barium and strontium. Hey, it's working so I can I can say something. Um, you know, aluminum is non-magnetic. However, when you electrify a piece of aluminum, it becomes like a little electromagnet. It'll have a north and a south pole. And as long as you keep it electrified, it will maintain those poles. And if you have lots of particles and you electrify them all and they all each have their own little pole, you know what they'll do? They'll line up in a row, north, south, north, south, north, south, creating a long chain line, kind of like the, uh, the little Morgellons filaments that are ultra fine that just sprout out of places. On me, they tend to uh, come out of my fingernails, my toenails, sides of my legs, sometimes the back of my head especially. I, mean, I don't see them coming off the back of my head. Of course, I don't see the, the medulla oblongata where apparently most of the stuff comes out at. It's like uh, streaming up my spine. So, uh, you know, either this is what I think it is, the chemtrail particles slash toxic fungus that grows inside our skin and, uh, you know, causes all the problems. Or it's evidence of the biofield, you know, the human biofield. If you can uh, tune the human biofield with sound and tuning forks, then it's a real physical thing. Well, there may be other aspects of the biofield besides its resonance with sound. Uh, I found with this toxic Morgellons chemtrail shit that alchemy is how you get rid of it. You can you fuck doctors. Doctors are lying pieces of beep. Alright. Doctors are worthless shit fucks. Your best hope with a doctor is that he's an idiot and he thinks he's helping you. And that's the best you can hope for. He won't be helping you. He's going to be making you worse, but he'll at least have a good heart and think he's helping you. And there's a lot of them like that. They're, they don't know. They know what they were taught and they said, this is how this works and this is how this works and here's why. And now you can do the experiment yourself and now you know something. But you really, they don't know shit. Alchemy, air, water, earth, fire. In that order, because air is the most important. You don't have air, you don't live long. Water, second, you don't have water, you don't live very long either. Earth, 
which kind of to me incorporates food as well. If you have shit food, you're not going to be very healthy. Uh, we've got all three of the above. Shit air, shit water, and shit food. Uh, so that brings us to fire, like Vita said. This crap likes to, uh, it's either the fungus or just the toxins build up in your cerebrospinal fluid and, and the plasma under your skin subdermally. Uh, I mean, it's the reason my wrists turn green from the copper or anything, you know, turns green or discolors from the copper. Oh, I just saw more melon hair coming out of my wrist. They like to come out of my wrists. Uh, that's the fungus being killed by the copper. Copper will kill fungus, virus, bacteria, germs. They don't like it. Copper kills them. So I've been having to do my arms a lot lately. So like this. Ooh, hey, they smoked. Okay, so anyway, what I'm trying to get is in the back of my head there, so I've kind of got this hopefully where it's catching it. Well, I'm just going to do whatever. I feel like I'm too low down, but it's probably all right. All right, let's see what happens here. Anything on the side of my head? I can look in the mirror over here. I've, I've burnt it back so far from, it used to be just like I get any heat near me and it's like a, I've got it so back so far that the flame almost doesn't burn me anymore. Like there are places where I can just lean over the flame and I know I'm like touching it and it doesn't burn me. And it doesn't seem to be burning it either. It's like it reaches a standstill. Anyway, this is the bad area. It's here. The back of my head is like swollen. It's like this area here. This hemisphere, this hemisphere on the back. There's a layer under my skin and you can kind of feel it. You can kind of see it sometimes. It's like it goes right along where my hair is, where the hairline is. It's slightly swollen, just a little bit. Not enough that you'd jump out and say, oh, there's something swollen on your head. That's where it's at and that's where it smokes from. And, uh, that's what gets rid of the migraines and the ringing in your ears, is smoking it out. Anyway, I, obviously I have no hair to burn. There's none left. Let's see what's there. It's getting up to temperature. I need to get my eyebrows too. That's been difficult. It's sizzling. I hear it. What's that little flame? There's a fungus in my head? Well, burn it out, baby. Burn it out. Burn that motherfucker. I found that the kind of a small flame really works, uh, works well. It's more precise. Can I just stop this thing? Nope, so no. Yeah, you can like get in really close to your ears and like if you, once you get used to it, you can, it's a really fine point. I mean, I can go up and around my ear without really burning my ear. Or my eyebrow. Get my eyebrow. takes practice. Right in here now. This is a heavy, heavy area. 
whatever in between two, two muscle groups are. So along the sides of your head, the back of your head, and you know, the base of the skull, in your joints, you know, where the tendons end at, and there's little areas with no muscle, that's where it likes to be. But it's not going to get squished around. Of course, it seems to be along the muscles too. So. The mastoids, big time, it seems to be like in the bones. It's, sometimes it, it manifests itself under my skin as, as a lump, a lump on my elbow or a lump on my shoulder or the white little lump on my eye right there. And that's not bone, it's skin. And it comes and goes over the course of the day, over the course of an hour. So does the lump on my, my shoulder. So does the lump at my elbow. It's... Uh, my fingers do a thing too, like uh, they'll, some of my videos show where they, they vacuum in. This one, wherever I, have, wherever I have scar tissue in my fingers, sometimes my fingers will like twist. I'll, I'll look at them and the skin looks as like it's twisting around somewhat on the bone, which, uh, which is not right. I don't know that ain't right. This left wrist was so bad for so long. It's looking so good. It's almost back to normal. I said the, the, uh, the flame hardly even gets to me anymore. It used to be like, ow, 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 ow. I can barely, you know, barely get, get close to me. And now it's like, I've removed so much of the stuff from my skin that my sensitivity's dropped. It's as if uh, your skin gets loaded with this fungus and it ties into your nervous system. And when you do something that's going to get rid of it, like burn it off or use uh, you know, acids in your bath or copper chloride or anything that's going to get rid of it, uh, it triggers, your, it makes you hypersensitive and then you say, you, you know, you won't do it. It'll like feel like it's burning you when it's when it's not. Well, when I first started trying to sizzle the stuff off, I had to like take the lighter and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would, you know, hurt. Now it's like I, I barely even feel it unless I hold it in one spot for a long time. I mean, maybe I should just use this, huh? Because it's a hotter flame. But the candle's more precise. And it will just, once it heats up an area, then it starts to come out even more. I can get it to smoke up the same spot over and over and over again. So obviously I'm not burning hair. I don't even have any hair. Although it feels like I'm, it feels like I have long hair and it's getting burnt out on the ends sometimes. <laughs> Like a phantom hair, like the phantom wind. I'm burning my phantom hair. Sometimes when I burn it also, there'll be uh, generally a kind of a weird smell, kind of a metal smell sometimes, although that is starting to reduce and it's more like a, a part mushroom smell, honestly. Um, often though, uh, Oh, what was this about the smell? Um, I forgot. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Uh, anyway, it smells weird. There's something sizzling off. Like up my sideburn areas is a really. It seems to. It seems to come out right here at my neck, my mastoids, behind my ear, the top of my ear, corner of my eyebrow, sides of my head, back of my head. Those are some of the worst areas. I mean, it's everywhere. All my joints, fingers, this thick skin looking area on my finger is it. All my knuckles look swollen. You know, but anyway, oh, I feel it on my, I feel it right there on my cheek. Let's see if it sizzles. There it went.
candle with the small flame is very pinpoint. Once you're used to it, you can I can go like around my ear without burning my ear pretty much. Which is nice. At first I couldn't. It would just the, the heat would go straight to my ear. But once enough of the stuff was removed so that it wasn't so overwhelmed with whatever having a lots and lots of uh, fuel to burn. It's not quite so uh, so uh, sensitive now. You can just kind of you know, find a track and run along it and watch the shit sizzle. It feels like little fuzzy things moving around on my skin and I'm chasing them with, a, with the flame. Honestly, I chase it around sometimes. It will start to run after a while. And that's when I really chase it down. Get heated up now. my eyebrow, off of my temple, get off to the top of my head. Get off the side of my head. Get off my ear. All the covers. I guess this is how you get rid of it. You burn it out a nanoparticle at a time. There goes a few thousand right there. Only 47 trillion more to go. Mm. This is how I get my eyebrows. Those little lumps on my eyebrows are it, of course. You can totally see it. There's a little area where the hair looks like it's pushed down a little more, like a hair on my eyebrow. It makes a little dot and there'll be a little wrinkle in my skin above it. That's where it's under my skin. And wherever there's a lump under my skin or it's uneven, that's where it is too. I noticed one like right here. It just looks like you know, the texture, or, you know, even or unevenness of your skin, but it's not normal, natural skin, you know, texture, tone. It's, uh, it's being added, you know, it's being swollen from this stuff. I think I can almost hear the jet liner going outside. I can feel it.
this will save some time and you add a little more. The, it's just starting to get warmed up now. It'll start going like crazy here, of course. Once it gets up to temperature and the stuff uh, moves a little easier. It's definitely electrically interactive. The reason it feels random is, well, electricity follows the path of least resistance and depending upon the conditions in your skin and your, your nerves and your moisture content in your body, the path of least resistance can vary, but it will have general places where it's, you know, where it's mainly at, but it can vary in the smaller places. I'll feel like, you know, a static heat buzz in my cheek and then my eyebrow and then I'll feel one on my arm and then on my leg and then on my side. And it's kind of hard to work when you're itching everywhere continuously, you know, not itching so bad that each itch drives you crazy. It's just that there's a, you know, hundreds of them and they never stop. At least not for days and weeks. I feel it right here, but it likes to live on the top of your temples, like it's interacting with my brain, trying to, you know, connect with my nervous system or something. Ooh, I hear something sizzling. Burn, motherfucker. Burn. candle you can pretty much not burn yourself and uh, you know my health gets better every time I do this although it's got a long ways to go it's, it's come a long ways though I'm not I'm not bleeding out of my fucking eyebrows and you know wondering what the hell to do now it's taken years though this is years in the making just to get better I'm still not there yet. And they spray us down every day, so... Who knows, if I can get rid of the shit faster than it builds up, maybe I'll be okay. Get off the top of my head. Motherfucker. On top of a smoky... All covered with... I don't need to use up all my minutes, but I'll be doing this for another hour. Yay, that's how I love to spend my evenings. Burning my freaking crap out of my skin with a candle by myself. Who needs girls? Girls are stupid.